Hey everybody, today we're going to look at polynomial sequences and how we can generate a sequence formula from them. So I used to play Settlers of Catan a lot back when uh, I used to live uh, with my parents and sister and uh, we would play on a board similar to this. Uh, but um, after we had like maybe three or four, or especially if we had five people playing when my wife started to play two, uh, we found it way too cramped to play on a board this big. And so we wanted to add a row of tiles all the way around and uh, just see how big uh, that would be. And so uh, it happens that um, there's 19 tiles in this picture. And um, if you add another row all the way around the outside. Uh, there ends up being 37 tiles. And uh, uh, that number, uh, well, those numbers, 1, 7, 19, uh, they're called the honeycomb sequence. And so uh, the question I have is simply, what's the nth number in the sequence? Here's a couple of numbers, right? 37's there. Um, we could figure out what the next number is. Uh, why don't we try to do that a moment? In order to find the next number in this sequence, let's see if we can figure out what the pattern is. And so if we look between 1 and 7, uh, find its common difference, uh, that would be a 6. And then between 7 and 19, that would be a 6 as well? No, that's a 12. Hmm. I got okay. some food, Dad, for you. You got some food for me? Yeah. Okay. It's food for you. Do you want to say hi? Yeah. Say hi. Hi. All right. Thank you. So we got a 6 and then a 12. And, um, well, that's not the same thing. Uh, maybe if we add 18 tiles all the way around, uh, right, 6, 12, 18, uh, would that equal the 37? 19 plus 18, yeah, that equals 37. And so I think the next number in this sequence would be if we added another 24. And uh, that would bring us up to 61. Is that, is that the right number? Yep. And uh, next after that was 91 because we added 30. And um, so now the rule is, or the question is, uh, suppose we had 10 people over. Um, how many tiles all the way around would we want if we wanted to go all the way out to the 10th number, which would be an extremely big game of Catan. But uh, anyway, that's, that's the question. How do you generate something like that? Um, first of all, uh, notice this is not an arithmetic sequence. It's kind of weird. It's, its differences are an arithmetic sequence. Um, and so this is an example of what we call a polynomial sequence. How do you find the polynomial that generates one of these sorts of sequences? There's a couple different strategies you could try. Um, you could just guess the formula and kind of tweak it and check it uh, and try and so forth. Um, and that might work if it's a simple enough uh, polynomial sequence. Uh, generally, that's not the best strategy. And so uh, another alternative is you can uh, write a system of equations and then solve it, um, maybe using matrices or something like that. You could also use the polynomial of best fit sort of thinking that we've done on um, Desmos or on our calculators. The key idea for all of this, however, is the degree of the polynomial, um, meaning is it an x squared or an x cubed or an x to the fourth or something like that. The degree is always going to be the number of differences that are required for you to be able to reach a constant number. So here's the first strategy. To find a formula for a polynomial sequence, the first thing you should do is figure out what the degree is. Use a difference table to do that. Then you can write a general equation and then uh, this is the solving uh, system of equations technique. Um, you'll write a couple of equations and solve that. So if we look at the difference table, um, we already did uh, a little bit of that, right? Uh, the difference between 1 and 7 is 6, between 7 and 19 is 12, between 19 and 8, 37 is 18, and so forth. Um, so those are our first differences. Uh, they're not all the same yet. Our second differences, if we take those differences and look at them, 6 minus, or 12 minus 6 is 6, 18 minus 12 is 6, 24 minus 18 is 6, these now match. And so what that means is that this is a quadratic, uh, a degree 2 polynomial. So now we're going to write a general equation for that. 
and so that will be something n squared plus something n plus something. And our goal is going to be to figure out what those somethings are. What are the numbers, constants a and b and c that make this work? So to write equations like that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write p of 1 is equal to, and I'm going to put 1s in for n and uh, see what we have. So the first number is 1. Um, so I'm going to put a 1 in here. And then here, 1 squared is 1. So 1 times a. And then uh, 1 times b is just 1 times b. And then uh, c. So if I take this equation and simplify it, I end up with the equation that a plus b plus c has to equal 1. Now I'm going to do the same sort of thing, and I'll put in a different number, uh, maybe the second number in the sequence. So these will be twos instead. The second number in our sequence was a 7, and so I'm going to write a 7 here. And uh, 2 squared is 4, so 4a, and uh, 2b plus c. And so now I have um, two equations and three variables. Um, I'm going to need a third, so I'm going to need to do this one more time. And so it um, makes sense probably to just go with the third number in the sequence, but you don't have to. Uh, you could go with the fifth number in the sequence, So, in which case this is a 5, and this is a 5. If I clean this up, the fifth number in the sequence was 61, and uh, this would be 25a and 5b and c. So now I have a system of three equations and three unknowns. And to solve this system uh, is kind of hard. You can, uh, you can do it by hand if you do a lot of substitutions. Um, I'm probably going to suggest using a calculator uh, and perhaps setting it up as a matrix. I'm not going to uh, take the time to show that in this video. Uh, but if you solve this system of equations for an A and a B and a C, um, those should be our answers. So I typed it into my calculator uh, using a matrix and a reduced row echelon form, and I got final answers here of 3, negative 3, and 1. And so that means that our A is a 3, and our B is a negative 3, and our C is a 1. So that's one way that uh, you can set it up. Uh, certainly the solving wing equations is a, a bit challenging, uh, so I want to show you another technique. So now I want to use a polynomial of best fit, or a regression, to calculate what the equation is. Uh, to do that, the first two steps are the same. You need to figure out what degree polynomial you're using, and so you do that by looking at the common differences and seeing how long does it take for them to repeat. In this case, it took two. And then coming up with your general equation, this would be a degree two, a quadratic. The next thing you'd have to do is graph your data. And so if you're going to use your calculator, uh, you'd have to go to stat and um, editor and type in your numbers in L1 and L2, and then use the stat plot, which is in the y equals screen, uh, to make that happen. Um, and then you can use the quadratic regression tool to make that work. Uh, alternatively, we could use Desmos. And so I'm going to show you using Desmos because, frankly, I like it better. All right. So if we want to make this happen in Desmos, the first thing we need to do is type in the data. And so I'll get out a table, and I'll type in my x values, or the n's, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the y values are going to be uh, the numbers that we had gotten, like uh, 1, 7. Um, after 7 was, um, let's see, we add 12, right? So 19, and then 37, and then we add um, 24 to get 61, I think. So let me just uh, hold shift and drag this uh, so I can see those numbers a little bit more obviously. Uh, and it looks like they form a curve, but it's hard to just look at and know if it's a quadratic or a cubic. That's why you have to do that um, constant differences idea. So now I want to fit it to uh, an equation of the sort of ax squared plus bx plus c. And a reminder, uh, to have Desmos calculate a, something of best fit, um, you need to use the subscripts, so ones for our x's and y's. 
and then um, make the equation not an equation but a tilde which is a shift and that thing next to the one and um, all of a sudden it uh, found the values for us three negative three and one and it said it was a perfect fit and so that's a really nice and quick way to uh, come up with a formula for all this and the benefit of now having it in Desmos is if you wanted to then figure out what the uh, tenth number in the list is uh, that's not too hard just drag this out to a ten right and uh, it looks like if you wanted to play with 10 people, you'd need 271 tiles. <laughs> so here's an example for you. I want you to see if you can figure out how many squares there are on an n by n checkerboard. So it's a very popular question. How many squares are there on a checkerboard? It's 8 by 8 generally, uh, but I'd like a formula for any number in the list. So real quick before uh, you hit pause and try this on your own, um, let me just remind you there's way more than 64 squares um, because uh, there's a little 2 by 2 square here and here's another 2 by 2 square that overlaps that and here's another one. Um, and uh, there's a 3 by 3 square, a bunch of them. There's 4 by 4 squares. So there's lots of different squares uh, on each of these. So I will say the first one, uh, the 1 by 1 square, is just there's only one square. In a 2 by 2 checker, board there's one two three four little squares plus there's uh, the next square up uh, or the next size up two by two there's a, one of those so there's five and uh, here there's nine little ones and there's four two by two squares in various places and then there is the one big square which would be um, a total of nine plus four plus one is I don't know Anyway, at this point, why don't you hit pause and see if you can come up with uh, all these. I believe the 8 by 8 is a 201-ish off the top of my head. Um, and then a formula for the n by n. And then you can uh, hit play and see uh, if your ideas match mine. So the first thing uh, we should probably do is, besides counting how many we have in these first examples, uh, figure out how many uh, differences we need for things to match. So here are uh, the numbers of squares in one, a two by two, a three by three, and a four by four. I went ahead and did the five by five one as well. And if we subtract these, uh, five minus one is a difference of four. Uh, 14 minus five is a difference of nine. Uh, 30 minus 14 is a difference of 16, and then a difference of 25. Um, those don't match yet, so let's look at the next differences. Uh, 9 minus 4 is 5. 16 minus 9 is um, 7. 25 minus 16 is um, 9, and then it would be 11. And these are common differences of 2. And uh, key is uh, it took three differences before all of these numbers matched. And so this uh, is certainly a cubic uh, polynomial. So then I went to Desmos and made a table uh, of those values. And I want to fit a cubic to it. And so uh, I used a x cubed, bx squared, cx, and d. And uh, if you make these all the subscripts, ones, and put a tilde in there, We've got a final answer of one third for A, and uh, B is a half. C, I think, is the fraction one sixth, uh, and D ends up you don't need it. I uh, didn't know that. So that gives us as a final answer uh, y equals one third x cubed plus one half x squared plus one half x. Uh, oops, I should probably call these n's, not x's. And uh, if we wanted to uh, check this a moment, uh, we could plug in an 8, and uh, this formula better give us a 204. It's pretty remarkable when you look at it that uh, a third um, 8 cubed isn't going to divide by 3 nicely. Um, 8 squared will divide by half nicely, but 8 doesn't divide by 1 sixth uh, or into sixths nicely. And yet uh, this formula always gives out an integer when you put in an integer. So anyway, real does in fact give us 204. So anyway, hope you had a um, uh, fun time learning about polynomial sequences. Uh, see how you can do. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and I'll be glad to help.